What's up everyone, Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive infographic inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. Okay, so you can see the infographic I created here. This is showing us the percentage of US citizens that actually own a passport. Now this infographic consists of just a few elements. It's actually quite simple. As you can see, we have three text elements. We have this number that's animating along with a graph here. We have the percent symbol, and then we have our little title here. And then we have the circle graph over here, which corresponds with our percentage. So now I'm gonna show you how in a few simple steps we can recreate this infographic. Okay, so I have a new composition set up here. Now the first thing I wanna do is grab my ellipse shape tool. And once that's selected, if you look over here, I can adjust the fill and stroke options. Now first, as you saw in the example, I just had a stroke on my circle. So to turn off the fill, I can click on the word fill, select none, okay. And my stroke is turned off right now, so I'm gonna turn that on by selecting solid color. And opacity at 50% is just fine. This, I can adjust the blend mode if I want. I'm gonna click okay. And we have a white color here, that's fine. But we wanna pump the width of our stroke up. That's what this is here, the number of pixels. So I'm gonna bring that way up to 300. Now, when I come over to my composition panel here, I'm gonna hold shift to keep my ellipse kind of perfectly symmetrical here. Now I'm gonna release, now I have a circle. I'm gonna go down here to this shape layer and I'm gonna rename it Circle Graph. Now I'm gonna hit S to bring up the scale and I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, say 83. Now I can go over to my line panel and make sure that this is aligned horizontally and aligned vertically. And that's still quite large. I'm gonna scale that down even more, say 75. Okay, so there we have our circle graph. Now I'm assuming you all know how to create text, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. And again, for this, this is just three simple elements. I have my large percent symbol in the background. I have the title, which says US citizens with a passport. And then I have my number in the center of the circle graph, which is gonna animate in unison with the circle graph once I have everything in place. Okay, so I have all my graphic elements in place here. Now I need to start to prepare these things for animation. And the first thing I wanna do is add an animator to this circle graph, or what's also known as a path operation. So if I go down here to my circle graph shape layer and open this up, close the transform properties, I'll open up these contents here. I can see my ellipse here. Now what I wanna do is go over here to this add menu button. I'm gonna open this up, and down here we have all of these path operations. And you can see I have trim paths. Now if I select this here, now that's gonna add a trim paths effect here. Now if I open this up, you'll see what's called a range selector. Now it has a start, end, and offset properties. And this controls how much of our path is going to be trimmed. And you can see here, we can see our path in the middle of the stroke here. Now if you see the end offset property, watch what happens to my path as I start to move this down. Now you can see that our path is being trimmed. Now what we can do here, we don't want our path to trim in this direction. So if I open up the ellipse, you see the path here, I can simply click on this reverse path direction. And that's gonna change the direction here, which is perfect. So now we have our circle graph set up and ready to go for animation. So for this animation, I could just go back into Trim Paths here and keyframe this in property. You can see here that all of these properties are keyframable. I could just easily add keyframes to the in property and bring this graphic to life. But I wanna show you how we could have a certain workflow that will keep things neat, keep things organized. So when you're working on more complex graphics or infographics, uh, you won't get too confused when you're trying to tweak your animation. So what we're gonna do for that is create what I call a control layer. So to do that, I'm gonna right click right in my comp here, or I can go to layer, new, and we're gonna do null object. That's gonna add our null here. I'm gonna rename it controller. Now before we go any further, I wanna tell you that I'm gonna bring this animation to life using expressions, but don't let that scare you away because we can create expressions using the good old pick whips. So don't worry about that. 
But what we want to do to control our expressions, we want to use expression controllers. So that's why I created this controller layer here. I'm going to select this and to add an expression control, I can go to effect and expression controls and I'm going to add a slider control. And what this slider control is going to do is going to control basically that end offset property of our trim paths. So when we adjust this slider, it's going to adjust this graph and we will eventually connect our text to that as well. So everything will be controlled through this one slider control. And again, it will neatly be controlled on this controller layer. And as I said before, this is a great workflow because when you start working on crazy, insane, complex infographics, linking everything to one simple controller layer is gonna keep everything nice and streamlined. So if I go here and open up my controller layer, under effects, you'll see that I have my slider controller here and everything's good to go. Okay, so I have my trim paths in place and I have my control layer all set up. Now I just need to link all these elements together. And as I said before, I'm gonna be using expressions, but we're gonna be doing it all through pick whips. Now, first I'm gonna open up this circle graph here, open up the contents and go back inside of the trim paths. And here I have my in property. This is what I wanna link up with my slider here. So to do that, I can go over here and grab this property pick whip of my end property and drag it directly over my slider control. And now the graph will immediately kind of disappear and that's because our slider is set to zero. And as I start to move this slider up, you'll see there our circle shows back up. Now, before I get too ahead of myself here, some of you might not see this property pick whip. This is a relatively new feature in the latest version of After Effects. So if you can't see this property pick whip, you'll simply manually add an expression by alt clicking on the stopwatch here. And then when it opens up the expression controls, you'll see a pick whip down here. And all you need to do is simply use this pick whip to connect to your slider control. So now the graph is connected to the slider control. As I move the slider control, you can see the graph move, but the numbers are not corresponding. So to make that connected, it's as simple as going to the text here, opening up the text, and you see the source text here. I'm gonna grab this property pick whip and connect that to our slider. And once again, if you can't see the property pick whip, alt click, manually add that expression, and then connect it via the expression pick whip. Now, when I move this, you see now that the numbers correspond. So our infographic is set up. All I need to do now is add some keyframes. I want this graph to animate from zero up to 42, which is the actual percentage of US citizens that own a passport. Okay, so we have our keyframes here. Now let's take a look at this animation real quick. I'll full screen it. Oh, and this, we have a problem here. You can see that it's not using whole numbers. It's not rounding these. It's using this crazy decimal points. So it looks terrible, completely unusable. So how can we take care of this? Well, I can add a simple expression that's gonna tell my slider to use round numbers for this animation. So to do that, I'm gonna alt click my slider control here, which is gonna add an expression. And this is the most complex part of this process. I'm gonna to go to the expression language menu and I'm gonna to go to JavaScript math, and you'll see there's right here, it says math.round value. So if I click on this, it's gonna add that. I'm gonna click outside, and now let's have a look. I'm gonna full screen it, and there we go. Now we have our round numbers. Now it's as simple as adjusting these keyframes. I can add a quick easy ease in, easy ease out, and kind of smooth this out. And there we go, we have our dynamic and responsive infographic. Now the cool thing about this infographic is you can tell that it's totally customizable. I can change all the colors, I can change the width of my circle graph, I can add multiple circle graphs and place them in different locations. I can even apply this trim path method to create bar graph style infographics, which would be really cool. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know if you did in the comment section. And be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects. I'll see you next time.